our Wi-Fi makes it through the show. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm Allison, and welcome to my weekly Meltdowns coverage of Big Brother 10, The Rewatch. Now, we covered episodes one through three with Alex and Beth and Tyler, who's just too busy. He, he couldn't grace us with his presence tonight, whatever. <laughs> but so I took a chance and I thought, you know, I'm going to reach out to this Brian Hart guy and I want to ask him some questions because he was the first one eliminated on Big Brother 10, but he is one of... The, the greatest players of Big Brother to play for such a short amount of time. You only played for seven days, right, Brian? Was I it seven? Like or? It, was like yeah. it was a little longer than seven because we started. There was some weird thing about when we started and, and when it was when it was off because it was a little longer, like a week and a half, I think is what it was. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably closer to ten. Mm -hmm. It's weird with the whole sequester before that. We were in oh, sequester yeah. a long time actually before that. So I was there for oh, I think like five six days before that so <laughs> it felt like a month but yeah it was only probably like you were only sequestered five or six days i think they actually are sequestered a month now <laughs> it's, it's, I, think it's, I think it might it's i mean it might be like two weeks yeah two yeah, weeks, they yeah really, really? Yeah. Why would they? That's a long time to be in that because now they have a it? now they have like a week without feeds and then they have mm -hmm. the week with feed. So like the first week of elimination actually. Yeah, well, the first like week in the house. In the house. Not, yeah. yeah. It's like crazy. Uh, no, I meant like in the hotel before but I you think walk. there's also yeah. two weeks in the hotel. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, fuck that. That, that was yeah. terrible. <laughs> no. I mean I because because of the follow up on the on eleven, I mean I went three years I've spent <laughs> I spent in that hotel. <laughs> in the five was the fourth of July. I think I spent in that hotel for two years in a row. And then basically I remember coming back like the third year. I was like, this is the first year I've had a fourth of July in like three years. So I really like it was just for some reason we I missed that because I was in that damn hotel room, like looking because you could see the fireworks over the valley and over the it was like you could see it in all the different areas. But yeah. That's the thing I've always wondered. There are some shows that I know that they don't allow you to like even really open the shade in your window or whatever when you're in sequester. Do they allow do you to that? No, that like, oh my like God. I know that they do that with um with someone could be signaling you about the other stuff. <laughs> <Who told you? laughs> Who told you that? I well, don't so know they, about that. They do that with like RuPaul's Drag Race and like those kind of things. Um, Why where, wouldn't they let they really? Be the perfect, yeah, be because the some of the rooms. seems so unnecessary. <laughs> because of where the rooms were or whatever hotel they're at, they can actually potentially see each other. And so they didn't want to have people see who each other were. Before. Not to knock RuPaul's Drag Race, but what kind of motel did they have them? <laughs> because we, Listen, we, we were, I mean, we're in, I get from my, from, well, from what I understand, they're at the same hotel. They may have changed it, but it's the Sheraton Universal and Universal City. City and it's it's on the top of a hill so there would be and the windows of every hotel that's that's more than more than a motel have have you know there's there's tint on them because the sun goes in so yeah, you can yeah. see in even if you wanted to but anyway yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm I mean, pretty sure survivors still use prison, that hotel too yeah, yeah. So that's, the hotel. Style, that's the one you have a mirror and you're sticking yeah. it out and you're looking to see who's got <laughs> yeah what's going now, don't on get me anymore. wrong it sucks but because you can't <laughs> leave and there's no tv and when i was there they just gave you a little um like a, a, a shit i don't know how old everybody is i mean those little portable dvd players that like oh, pop yeah. open yeah. and then you would have to you get a, a book of all the stuff you'd want to watch and so you'd have to like rent shit oh, but God. then somebody else might have taken the one you wanted so oh. it was like it was, it was like the worst shared? red box experience it was like just ever a had limited library life. for yeah. everybody that's sucks. and that's they stopped awful. they they stopped letting me watch they, they, I like started off watching movies, and I'm like, ah, oh, this is awesome. And I think I started watching like Scrubs, like like just oh, seasons okay. of Scrubs. And then they shut me down because I had never seen the show before. So they made me watch <laughs> seasons of Big Brother, and they were, which I found out later, were very specific as the ones they were letting me watch because they were trying to steer me in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. So I was very like, it was a lot of Doctor Will. They really, yeah. really yeah. wanted me to to like 
find out, deal with, to kind of do what he did. That was the yeah. whole point. Yeah. And so I, I started watching this. So I was like watching and I begged them. I was like, I don't want to watch this anymore. Like, <laughs> please give me something else to watch. I'm about to, I'm about to live this for a while. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to yeah. watch this so okay. I fast forward it a lot and try to get through it, but yeah. I do think it is so interesting because like so many people who play now, like, you know, a lot of them don't watch until they're in the hotel and then like, yeah. you just have no idea what to do when they get in there. And it just seemed like you figured it out pretty quick. So I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe it just speaks to like, you just I, grasping it quickly, but. I asked a lot of questions and, yeah. and it was, I wasn't, honestly, the biggest thing was, so when I kind of how I got in was a lot different than a lot of other people. So mm -hmm. I had, didn't want anything to do with it. And I was in San Francisco. Yeah, tell uh, us about that. <laughs> so I was in the city. It was a Friday. San Francisco is a, uh, is a, is a very financial city. So mm -hmm. the, everybody kind of gets out earlier. Happy hour is where it's at, right? Happy hour is the big thing in the city. And, and if it's the sun's out and it's happy hour, like it's the whole crowd just empties into the streets. So, <laughs> We were at a hotel. Um, my buddies and I met there for drinks at the bar and I forgot something at my house. I don't mm -hmm. really remember what it was, but basically I went out to go grab a cab when they, people still took cabs. And I saw two people getting out of the cab and it was a guy and a girl. And you could tell that they weren't from there and it was Friday, so they weren't there for business. And you mm -hmm. could tell they weren't together just by the way they interacted with each other. So I said, you know, they were young. And I was like, hey, I can tell you guys don't know anybody. I can tell you're not from here. Uh, so if you want to come inside and hang out with my friends and I, we're having drinks, you're more than welcome to join us. And they said, are you drunk? And I said, not yet, but I, I will be pretty <laughs> soon. So they were, uh, whatever you want to call them, junior producers or whatever, the people that go out and try to find uh, contestants. And yeah. so they were there hosting, um, these meets and whatever it is at the bars, they go yeah, to the bars like the casting and calls. Yeah. There yeah, you yeah. Go. And so for the next three days, they were partying with us. Essentially, we were taking them to <laughs> bars and they were asking, will you join? Will you come? Would you do this? And fuck no, but you can still <laughs> hang out. Um, and that went on for the whole weekend. And then they went back to LA um, and I basically, they kept calling and I just <laughs> kept saying no until they basically were like, well, why don't you come to LA, meet the producers and just, just come for a free trip. And so I was like, oh, all right, I can do that. <laughs> and then I got there and they treated me like a fucking movie star. And I was like, I could get used to this. This isn't that bad at all. Yeah. Like, is this what happens when you go on this show? And so completely just snowed me but i asked a lot of questions i fought them the whole time um and base and I, I was just trying to get like what is this and what's the point and why am i going to do it and my sister my younger sister's wedding was that summer and i would have if i would have done well i would have missed it not one if i would have done well i would have missed it yeah and because it was like right around the time, it was in August. So it was like right around the time that I could have, if I would have gotten to the point where she had her wedding, I would have been in the jury. And yeah. so that was it, I was locked up. And so it was like, well, if I do this, I'm gonna, I better fucking win and buy her a big ass <laughs> present or <Right. laughs> I need to get out like quick. Yeah. So basically that was the mentality was. And so from the very beginning, people would ask questions and I said, well, I'm either going to be kicked out right away or I'm going to win because I don't really have, I, I can't do, I can't do the middle. <laughs> so yeah. it kind of, that was the mentality I had. So it was just a matter of, uh, it was, you know, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And that's just kind of the way I am with everything. That's really interesting because it does seem like, I mean, that, I think that's one of the reasons why so many people are like, if they ever ask like, uh, like I've definitely seen people talk about this in the big brother community where it's like, Oh, they should do a season where it's like all the people who are out first. And then somebody mm -hmm. invariably is like, Brian would win. It's obvious. Like, cause so many of those people are so like, just not with it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the, in general, like usually the first person who goes is like 
the disagreeable person. Like, mm. you know, like the status quo would have been like Rennie yeah. on your scene. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you just shut up and that's what Memphis, everyone that's the wrong why way. Memphis was smart. And Memphis right. is my friend to this day because he was like, I'm just gonna chill until this is kind of done. And then when the dust settles, I'll figure out my moves. Yeah. And but like so, uh, yeah. Yeah, but like you could tell, like when you're out and you're talking to Julie, it's like you knew immediately, like what you did. You're like, oh yeah, I overplayed. Like I played too hard, yeah. too hard, too fast. You know what I mean? So I got caught, and yeah. that's basically what it was. Um, and you know, it's it set the tone and it set set my boy up, and he was <laughs> able to go the distance, right? And he was fucking. Amy's great at what he does, but <laughs> yeah. we had a conversation the night before I left, and I literally laid it out. I said, Memphis is your biggest problem. I said that figure it figure him out and you got it. And so and that was it. We talked for an hour. I went through a little profile on everybody that was not sock form and uh, uh it was it was able to uh hopefully help him. But I mean he's one of the guys though that was the complete opposite of me in the sense that man, talk about somebody who really like knew had seen it had studied the show before i mean he he finally somebody he actually yeah. was really paying attention to what was going on and good for him um and it worked out for him but yeah fuck man that game is anything could have happened i mean people are always <laughs> like oh you know you'd win it a million times over shit one thing happens differently and it sends a tumble of you know dice or whatever tumble of dominoes and the whole thing goes south so when well, it's been wild too rewatching it because you know i mean mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, Dan wins the season, Dan goes on to like have a great showing in Big Brother 14 as well, you know, and like, I mean, a lot of most people like, I mean, it's it's a conversation between Dan and Will when people talk about like who's the best player to ever play Big Brother and like completely different people. Yeah, you can't, like, you can't yeah. even Dan is nice and he's a nice <laughs> guy. So I, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter how, how good he is. You don't want to vote him off. Like it's yeah. not, he's going to last a certain amount of time just because he's a pleasant, good person to be around. Yeah. Right. I, as far as I'm concerned, you, if you want to talk about from a game strategy, how do you beat the sociopath? Like it's not <laughs> you, 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 the dude will, Will is a different kind of like, <laughs> like that's yeah. a whole, you can't, cause like you couldn't put the two in the same room because I, Dan's not, he's he just, it's not, there's two different people. There's, he's, you're not, Will wouldn't let him get as far as he wouldn't let the nice guy take the cake. I, I don't know. I maybe he would, like I said, I don't follow the game that much, but I've met yeah, yeah, both yeah. of them and uh yeah, I don't That's know. Awesome. It'd be That's fascinating. It'd be really tough. I mean, they're both yeah. they're both so smart, but fuck, man. I, <laughs> yeah, I, the shit that that guy did. I mean, I've never seen anybody as blatantly fuck you as <laughs> like I'm gonna yeah. win and fuck the rest of you and actually maneuver his way <laughs> to <it>. winning. <laughs> I, I I just yeah. don't. I don't know how you do that. Like, well, crazy. in All Stars. Stood up and when he was nominated yeah. and said, Throw me out, I'm yeah. gonna make your life hell if yeah. you don't. And guess what? They didn't vote him out. Ah. I mean, yeah. that's, that's why I love the guy so much. He just he's half man and he's half amazing. To watch the to watch the videos of mm -hmm. the conversations of the and this is like I said, I didn't watch it much, but the one thing I'll never forget, I can't even believe I remember this. Is the 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 shows or the episodes of the conversations of the house guests after he would ha have those declarative statements or after he would do something like that, where every person who's watching this video is like, "Are you out of your mind?" And you're watching their heads get fucked up, <laughs> and you watch them trip over each other. Like, well, maybe he means that, and you're like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> you're like, overthinking this. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, you can't. It's the same thing. We were. I, the, the shit I was watching when we were out, what which I thought was hysterical, was I'm at home and I'm watching conversations take place about how I'm influencing the game yes. through through other people. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm running around trying to fuck previous house guests. I don't care <laughs> what in the world is happening. Like, I yeah. don't, you know what I mean? I'm on a whole different path at this that, point. Like, that first week really uh, like set the tone for a lot of people's decision-making. Yeah. I was, you know, I'm at that point, I'm, 
I mean, you know, 26 <laughs> years old, I think, or something like 27 years old, and I'm just running around trying to fucking be me and like enjoying yeah. the sliver of you, fucking attention that you get from this. Right. And, You're out of the house a month and people are still going, well, you know, I'm still under Brian's shadow. Yeah, That's the what problem. the That's fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I, I'm gone. Like, and poor, poor Andy and Steven dealt with that for, yep. you know, that was their demise. But yeah. I mean, shit, it was. It, it was so it, you know listen it was a crazy 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 experience but like i had i told you allison i i wouldn't have the job i have today i work for live nation now i everything that i pretty much have right now and i never would have thought this was <laughs> big brother directly set me on a path that pretty much wrote the script for the rest of my life i mean i met uh, when i went back to do the game show that season um, I met Boogie and, and Boogie and I hit it off and I went, I went down there. I was supposed to fly down, do the show and fly back. And I flew down and Boogie's like, why are you in a rush? Why don't you just fly back the next day? And <laughs> he said, meet me down. I said, sure. I meet me downstairs. He picked me up in his Bentley. And the next wow. thing I know, he were uh, it was like i left like 10 days later i mean i woke oh, wow. up like it was unbelievable i mean so his and you know, most people didn't even i mean he was running he was he owned and ran the most popular nightclub in the world that's right yeah and some of the most popular restaurants and he was they were some of the first to do these celebrity owned like restaurants mm -hmm. so geisha house and dolce and all of these restaurants and it was like living in a fairy tale i mean it was like any it's nothing you could ever imagine i mean it was crazy all and because so, you lived in a TV studio for a week and a half. Yeah, and so <laughs> I was there, and then a few months later, I was in between. I was like leaving LA, going back out. Maybe it was long, kind of been longer than that. I don't even remember. But basically, um, he's like, "Why don't you come to LA and work for me?" He's like, "I need you to to can you watch this place for me?" <laughs> and I said, well, "I don't know anything about you know running a nightclub." And he's like, "It doesn't matter. It's babysitting. He goes, just watch these people." <laughs> and you'll be fine and it was lay do and it was just one of the most famous nightclubs in the world and i mean jesus it was it was insane <laughs> so that that from was there how it started and you know it was memphis and i hung out from <laughs> he was running nightclubs for with a company called sbe and so he, he would close his place or i would close mine and he would show up at three o'clock in the morning and we would drink till the wee hours of whenever and so we've been friends you know, for years since. And wow. uh, that business was just a stepping stone to kind of where I'm at today. That's well, Brian, Brian. Yeah, Brian, if I ever make it on Big Brother, because you know that I'm having to beat them away with my fly swatter, you know, yeah. they won't leave me alone. Um, no, but can I blame you if my game goes to shit in the diary room? Can I just go, I'm just, it's Brian Hart. Yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's it's just believe it. I, no. Somebody will believe. Don't tell them I was on this because then next thing you know, you'll get kicked <laughs> oh, out yeah, of the yeah, house. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Um, so, Brian, you spoke a little bit about your casting story and your process of getting onto Big Brother 10. Our, uh, our other co host, Tyler, couldn't be with us tonight. We did want to know what was the process for potentially bringing you back for season 11? And if you got on, like, what would your strategy have been? Okay. Oh, Jesus. Um, I don't, I don't think I ever had a strategy. Um, so it all, the same reason I was brought back and this is obviously, I don't, uh, what the producers told me and the casting producer told me who I love to death. And most people know is they were, I had a lot of high ratings, I guess, or, or mm -hmm. had something to do with, it was well light, something along the lines where it was beneficial as a possibility to have me Definitely. come back, which is where kind of the game show thing I think came from as well. So um, the second season was really, and it really was a, a kind of up in the air. So when I, at season 11, they were like, okay, well, we want to set it up. So somebody goes back in the house like they did. And, they called me and I forget what they, cause never, we were separated into teams, right? So it was like the, the athlete. The high school the, clicks, the, yeah, the clicks, right. right? Yeah, right, that's what it was. Yeah. And I remember they thought I would be offended. What did they put me on? They put the me brains. on the brains. Did they? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. 
Yeah, you were the brains. Okay. I, for some reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, think about who else was there. You had to be on the brains. Yeah, so yeah. they were. They were, they were <laughs> you got Jesse and Cowboy and Jessica. Yeah, that's not the brains thing. Yeah, right? that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they thought that I would be like upset that I wasn't. I don't know. I, I, for whatever reason. And I was like, well, sure. I mean, whatever. Like, let's keep the roller coaster going. Let's, let's see how long I can ride this thing out. <laughs> um, and it was a pretty. You know, it, it was pretty crazy because it sequester was completely different that time. We were allowed to do more. However, the second time <laughs> there were a lot more rules around who was allowed to come talk to me and who wasn't allowed to come oh. talk to me. Because the first time I had tricked a bunch of them into giving me cell phones and stuff. So um <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you were manipulating people before yeah. you really got in the house. Yeah. You were so in the, the house. second <laughs> time they that's right. The second time the PAs weren't allowed to come in by themselves. So they had to have <laughs> someone have with them and they were limited to the amount of time they were allowed to be in there. So <laughs> because they come in to bring you food, right? And then they come in to like talk to you because you're like by yourself talking to the walls. So um I do remember that. That was different. They were a lot stricter the second time around. Um, <laughs> I remember that Marnie was one of the producers and she was the one that was telling me that that was it. And I heard a lot of stories after the fact too, about, about that, but, um, going into it, I knew it was like a 25% chance and I knew it had to do with, with what was, um, what the challenge was. So I didn't think about it too much. I think that, um, I was more along the lines of, of, of saying, all right, well, I, cause for me, it's just about like, you've got to assess and then kind of go. So I would have needed to, I, I would have needed to kind of size it all up. Like what's the situ like, what's the situation? Wh who are these people? And then me going in as a previous person, I would have had to completely flip it, which means I probably would have had to be nice. And I just, that's not like, that's not usually my like <laughs> MO. So like the going in making fun of everybody scenario isn't really, pro I probably would have had to sit back a little bit and kind of feel it out. But, um, and then also depending on how they categorized me, you would have to figure out how people would perceive that and, and work through it that way. But again, it would have been a hundred percent the same mentality. It wouldn't have changed a thing either. Get me the fuck out of here or, I'm going to go take this the distance because to me, there's nothing, there's no bigger loser than the person that was in there and was like third or fourth place. Like get the fuck <laughs> out of here. That like, that's to me the biggest. I got to feel nightmare. that way too. I got it. It's yeah. worse because it's a horrible, hor no matter what anybody tell you anything different. So it's a horrible, it's gotta be horrible so boring. place to be. Not only boring, it's like, decorated like you're in some fucking fucked up fun house and it's like the furniture is uncomfortable and there's it's like cold it's so cold in there and it's I've because they have, it's yeah they got to keep all the cameras and then it's a, the um, valley so it's like all boiling outside the surface <laughs> of the sun and so and the swimming pool is the size of like a really uncomfortable hot tub and so it's like the whole thing is just it's just it's not a pleasant experience. It's just yeah. not, it's not fun. So you basically like get me the fuck out. And, and honestly, I, they, you go a little nuts. I mean, it's just a giant, oh, yeah. it's just a giant experiment. The whole yeah. thing is just rats in a, in a fucking maze. So, and how can you torture them? I mean, put, <laughs> I remember they asked me when we, before we went in there, who do you hate? What type of people do you hate more than anything else? Oh my God. I'm and so I'm like, <laughs> you're asking me this because you're going to fucking put that person in there. Yes. And yeah. God damn if they didn't that person. <laughs> and so you immediately are like, it, it's, it's just, really, I would have really lied. I would have been like, I really dislike people who um, are considerate of other people oh. um, that like to do the dishes. I really hate that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> They, 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 they get it out of you. Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah. They, they, there's some moments. <laughs> there's a there's some moments for sure. But it was, Absolutely. like I said, the people were all, everybody was really nice. And uh, the producers, it was really good. I mean, honestly, like, I, I give it a hard time. and But it was, everything was a really great experience. And they, you know, they, they treat you very well. And they're very, they're very sweet. And they've got, for, for as long of a running show as it is, and for as much as goes into it, which is, I mean, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they've got shifts of people. I mean, 
I'll never forget the first time you have people come up to you and they're like, hi, and they introduce themselves after it's over. And they're like, I was watching you for eight hours. Like they're the, the they're the, there's right. three people right. that they have one job and it's to follow you with a camera, right? So there's, oh. so there's three, there's shifts and there's three shifts of people that their job is to follow you and no one else. Oh my God. And I so, and then the directors, I'm assuming probably tell them what cameras they're using and stuff like that. But that person, so there's three people that have seen you, have seen all of you. There's three people <laughs> that right. have watched you go to the bathroom. There's three people okay. that have watched. I mean, there are three people that have seen the whole thing. And you know, there's, you're supposed to get some sort of comfort, like, oh, and by the way, when you go in the stall, they look away. You're like, I don't, that doesn't make me oh, feel good. better. It yeah, doesn't right. make me feel better. I know there's a camera right there. Yeah. Like, I know there's, there's a camera right there. And I know there. there's somebody yeah. on the other end of that yeah. sitting in a chair. And I mean, I'm sure they do, because who wants to watch that? But uh, <laughs> I mean, you never know. It's, it's the right. type so. of person. <laughs> but I mean, that's- Who would ever then, know? Then, then you meet those people and you're like, wow, there's just the amount of work that they put into that is is something else. I mean, it's it's 10 times. I have friends that, that produce shows and direct shows and- um, you know, they, they put a lot of work in as well, but the, the amount of the work the big brother people put in is, is pretty serious. Well, one of our viewers, Valencia, she's curious. She goes, I want to know about the voice in the house. Did they tell the you to stop that a lot? Like you're not allowed to sing. I got in trouble all the time. <laughs> I don't, oh my God. Constantly. That I, const right. I, mean, I, I so still to this, this day. I met that guy. Hear that I went voice. to one, I yeah. went to one taping yeah. last summer. Yeah. Uh, last summer, summer before last, and I met that guy. Yeah, I still cool hear guy. that voice to my day to this day. <laughs> I hear that voice to this day. Like Brian, please put that down, Brian. So because I got bored and I don't deal well with boredom, and so I so they have these. Feel like, that you all see these in like the these de decoration stores, the little wicker balls that you'll see for like decoration. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started playing bocce. Like I was throwing them out there. <laughs> I was gonna say you were really good at coming up with games in there. Like that's yeah. something more yeah. people should like. Too many people just sit around in there and. We always yeah. wonder why they don't like invent games. The I way know. They did. I feel like the last season that did that was BB Seventeen, where they had pot ball or whatever with like yeah. the. I don't know why you just said they like you well, come, up could, yeah, come up yeah. with something. Yeah, come up with something. They want you doing this. They yeah, want you that's doing true. This the whole time, but they. I mean, I got constantly, constantly, constantly told to stop doing things. I mean, it was, it, <laughs> that's it was interesting, right? Nonstop. Yeah, nonstop. Stop but, that. Stop yeah. that. I have a question for you. Um, uh -huh. actually, Tyler was wanting to know. Who did you vote for for the first HOH? Jerry won. No idea. There's no way I would have voted for Jerry. <laughs> well, they say yeah, they said Jerry won with only four votes. So and there had to four, be like a plurality all over the place. And Rennie had like I love that they did that for like that competition that though. I love yeah, that I like agree. first first sight, no like getting to speak to anybody just on impressions alone. You know what I mean? I have you no You think it was Dan? Idea. Cuz you did say you got a good vibe about him. It, I've had to. Well, Dan and I and I like, like I said I don't it's been so long since I'd seen it, but Dan and I were very were constantly together. We were extremely yeah. close. Um it, more so than the cameras probably probably showed. And so it was probably Dan. I mean, I can almost, I mean, that would have, I, you know, I was close with Angie and and Steven, but it would have been it would have been Dan, and without a doubt. Wow. Yeah. And there's only um, 13 people. Can you imagine doing it now with 16 people? It doesn't, wouldn't have mattered. It, you hate so many of the people that like <laughs> three more gives a shit. Like, yeah. like whatever. Like really, you just, there's, you, there's nowhere to go anyways. There's, I mean, my season, more archetypes. my season, they turned the extra room into a fucking nail salon. Like that was the biggest horse I've shit. Like that. some people had a gym. Some people had all this shit. We got a fucking nail salon. Like, what is that? Like that was the worst. I mean, it worked out for the sock puppet situation, but it, it, it was the worst. See, you found the utility. I had this is I, a, boredom, the boredom, interview ever. <laughs> boredom, 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 boredom. I mean, we just were constantly trying to find things, and you couldn't sleep because there was so much noise. Like, Rennie? you're just in, <laughs> in the walls. Well, the walls are really thin, right? I've, I've definitely and heard that. The before. walls are thin. You constantly hear like you. It, it's not like a soothing white noise like you would hope it would be, but like all the air conditioning and the machinery and stuff. Uh, like you hear this hum. But then at the same time, the beds are really small because they're not 
they're, they're, they're small, they're shorter and I'm a really tall guy. So it's like, you have to deal with that whole aspect of it. And everything, like I said, is really uncomfortable. So you don't sleep well. And then they wake you up fucking early as shit. And so that whole thing, you, so no matter how late you stay up, you're getting yeah. up early anyway. Yeah. So like that whole thing kind of all mixed in together is just, you just are constantly trying to keep yourself sane and busy. At least I was. I mean, what do I know? I was there for like four minutes. So, and plus, I'm um, um, the days where you're not even allowed to go outside into the backyard, too, mm -hmm. like with competitions being set up and such. That's the thing I think that when I think about if I were to ever be in the Big Brother house, the idea that there is no natural sunlight and or that I would be able to see at any time for a few days is actually something that I'm like, oh, wow, that actually would probably play pretty heavily on my mental health without I, even really it, thinking it, about it it had to really mess with them. Like I said, I mean, yeah. I, I was in there for such a short period of time and those guys are in there for so long that I, you know, I, to this day, don't know how they, they did it for yeah. months. I mean, I, I, Memphis and I talked about it once and he was telling me that, you know, he was like, I was losing it. He's like, I, I was fucking, I like, he goes, I was losing it because it was, yeah. and I can't, I mean, it's just tough. Like you, you can't, I can't do it for that short a period of time. So I can't imagine how they, they were able to do it for that long. I mean, it really is compared to all these other, you watch all these other games and yeah, the survivor ones are, are hard and you know, but I mean, from a mental perspective, mm -hmm. man, it fucks you up. Like it's just a whole Look at everybody freaking the fuck out now because we got to stay at home. Like I know. it's <laughs> like we're all, we're all training for Big Brother, and they have I internet mean, and Netflix and Disney Plus and all that. Hum, you can't right. read. The yeah. only thing you can read, like it's there's it's, no that, like, games. You can't talk about shows. Like yeah, I mean, you yeah, read the you, Bible or something, right? They let you read the Bible. Dan, you read the Bible, Brian? Dan, Come I, on. I, How far I, caught, I caught Dan pretending like he was reading it a few times. <laughs> that was just his <laughs> mo. Man. That became his <laughs> mo. <laughs> he was really reading it, but to this day, I can picture him laying on that bed, flipping through the pen. I'm like, get the fuck out of here! You're not like no one's reading the Bible like this. Fast, man. I fucking read that. Stop it. But I mean, shit. Maybe he was like, all right, this is the only way I'm going to keep it together is if I have something to read. But we did get the we did get music every morning, and that was like the funnest. Yep. I, that's the probably the most two most fun moments that I had that I can remember were the first one would be. When I when we got I got bored and when we figured out when we got put on slop how I was able I cooked I found a way to basically deep fry it in pancake mm -hmm. form oh and so that was a lot of fun and then like just the whole everybody around and it was like a very fun group moment um, and then I remember the mornings I remember the mornings were a blast especially because <laughs> like Stephen had the best music choices and you could always that's where i heard uh scissor 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 sisters um the dance what is it i can't uh i know exactly what you're talking about too oh my god it's the best song ever i'll never and i associate it every time i hear it i go it's like sense memory i go right back to that morning because it's like such an upbeat song um Somebody help me. Somebody I'm Google it. If there was it. only this oh, site yeah. that we could. I don't could feel answer. like dancing. I don't feel like dancing. Yeah. So there's yeah. sisters that don't feel like dancing. Yeah. And that song came on and it was like an immediate like wake up. But the mornings when you got to hear music was really nice. Yeah. You know, here's a fun fact for you since you don't watch Big Brother anymore. Which year was it? Big Brother 19 where there was a girl on the show named Christmas no shit and she it, it was in the morning when they were playing the music and there was a guy on there who was a rodeo clown and no shit and so they were run, running around in the backyard and christmas was riding his back and i think they were playing the song uh save a horse riding right. a cowboy oh, yeah, something like that. And he tripped and fell and landed on her. And what did, didn't she break her foot? She, she yeah, yeah, I think it was her foot. Yeah. And, but, and she continued to like play. shattered her foot. Yeah, they yeah, pulled her she, out. She voted from the hospital. She voted and then from they the sent her back in. Tonight. And she played the rest of the season on crutches. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. bullshit. She got and out she of the house. She made the final three. She made that's, the final three. 
story. That's an asterisk. She was exposed to the real world. I agree. Yeah. That's an asterisk. Because, I mean, these guys, when I went back for the game show, we had that. That was the whole point. That was the questions, right? We were asking them questions about what was happening in the world. And I think the one that was my favorite was, you know, because I knew how the guys would answer, some of the guys would answer this. And it was Brett Favre has left the Green Bay Packers and yeah. went to the Minnesota Vikings. That was a good one. Yeah. And no, people were like, Kid, what the fuck are you yeah. talking about? That's like, that was, nobody would have bought that. <laughs> I'll, I'll never, forget, I'll for never forget Dan and Memphis's face when I told them that. And that was, they just were, their mind was blown. That was well, great. I, yeah. I think yeah. one of the best moments still over the past few years was in 2016 with Big Brother Over the Top where they had the, the results of the presidential election. Oh, and you had these people who had no yeah. idea who won. Oh, yeah, that's wow. like the one time Big Brother was on CNN. Like, yeah, that, and they were like, the laugh, their face. they all were awesome. like, all right. Because that happened to be the one time they did a fall season and it, like, yeah. and it was wow. yeah. you and they all were like us? what yeah. happened out there because like they went in thinking like oh wow hillary was leading by a lot and all of a sudden it's donald trump that's wow like, something had to have happened so yeah um, that would have been yeah yeah, that would have definitely highly been. recommend looking at that clip. Whoa. Those are those moments <laughs> where, like, yeah, you need to look that up. And then this year, Big Brother Canada had to oh, stop yeah. their most recent season, right? They're in the spring, they start what in March, early March. Yeah. They were only yeah. in there, they only for, got like four weeks in yeah. before just like making everyone just canceling the season. It was already kind of a shit season to begin with. Oh, it's horrible. Two people it's so who, one person who quit, two people that they pulled out of the game for controversial reasons. And Grace they were like, oh, now we're going to end it. Yeah, it was a train mm -hmm. wreck. We were uh, talking about that too. You guys were, uh, I was talking to Allison about Big Brother lately. And it's funny because the only time I had ever been exposed to it before I went on was, was in Australia. And for those of you who have watched European or Australian Big Brother, it's essentially like, you know, it's, it's essentially nighttime TV with nude scenes. Mm -hmm. And so it's coming back by the way, the Australian there. one. Yeah. They're just bringing it back. It's been gone for a while, but big brother Australia, I think like in a week or two, is just about to like they, come back it, for the it, first time. That's where, wow. that's when they, that was one of the main reasons when they were first asking me, I'm like, it's basically just a bunch of C-list fucking celebrities. Right. Yeah. Get in the shower. Like, <laughs> so, uh, you know, no. <laughs> so, and so, but now I guess, they're going i guess that's what that's what allison was telling me it's more like influencers and stuff yeah it's it's if you're a hot bikini model on instagram and you have two billion followers and you you're on big brother and really? literally well, there are people like you didn't know in your you said even said i don't know i didn't know what it was and i watched it and i they wanted me on it and i did it and but these people but you're smart brian you have a brain. You played the game. That's why you're so legendary. And, and everyone wants to talk to you about being out first on 10 because of the way you played. You've got these idiots who come on the show. They literally don't know their asshole from a hole in the ground. And they don't know what they're doing. There's, I mean, it is. And it's so painful for people like me and Beth and Alex and Tyler to watch because we're like, what the fuck are you doing right now? <laughs> so do they, do you, do you well, guys, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you kind of like in a nutshell what happened, right? Yeah. Big Brother 15 was a very, very controversial season. A lot of things got said that yeah. like TMZ covered it, like, like, you know, racist comments, uh, homophobic comments. Was there was just bad. a lot of things. It became a snowball rolling downhill. And First really all, all, all CBS did was kind of slap a disclaimer up. You know what, what I mean? mean? What the like I wore a fucking Soviet Union shirt on the show. Like everybody. I remember that. Well, that oh, was wow. pre Twitter. You what know what I mean? Yeah, what Social media kind of. Oh. What do yeah. you think you're going to get when you slap a bunch of random ass people yep. in a fucking house together? And film them for every, every waking shot. moment. Under, under an yeah. entire pressure cooker of a situation. Yeah, yeah. Like, listen, I wasn't exactly balanced at that far. I mean, I, right. you know what I mean? Like, I had my own shit going on. I was, obviously, I didn't have anything to do. So I was like, <laughs> what's this guy? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so when, you, when you've got like a yeah. group of people, whether it's a guy who's in his 20s and is, has no fucking clue what he's going to do with himself, or it's, you know, a psychotic 67 year old who's just fucking bored, like, yeah, one or the other. Like you're gonna get stuff like that. Who gives yeah. a shit? Like whatever. Like I but don't the know. so the backlash was severe 
for that yeah, season. And the next season, it did seem yeah. like there was like a conscious shift in the casting. And like there has been some moments like if you watch it, get better when they put a bunch of fucking Twitter like. Well, it's just it, it just they ch- it just seemed like they chose people who were safer. You know what I mean? Wow. Like, and then also there have been these moments in like, the last couple of years where audio is leaked from the diary room where they're like basically telling them what to say now. Like people really? are like people are at least partially scripted now. They're like they're kind of given their role like you were, but now they're also really kind of like boxed in no, more. I, I think it. to. To they try were, to make it safer, you know. I would get. I don't know who was there when I was there because, like, there you have a couple different people that that do the diary room, but they were fucking. Those guys were good. They were ninjas. Like they were. There they was my no, ninjas. Yeah, they they were good. Like I even, think they like I said, until years later after meeting everybody, I didn't know what they were trying to do, but you mm-hmm. could see that they were trying to turn me into a will type character. By yeah. the way, some of the things I can look back. Right. But even in the diary room, because somebody asked me that when I came out, because people were like, "Oh, it's fucking scripted," and because all a lot of these shows are like, sure. when I used to work at when I used to work at the club, you know, they would shoot the hills there, and you mm. would literally watch them. We would reshoot the, them walking into the place <laughs> like so four fake, fucking yeah. times, right? Like it's oh and there's God. it's a scripted <laughs> show, like it's not right. like it's so you so you see that, and so people would ask me, and I'm like, it, it really wasn't like yeah. Right? They would, you would go sit in that room and they would ask you questions and hope you answered things in certain mm-hmm. ways. And they would really try to steer you that direction. And, but it was more about getting you fired up about something right. that you weren't fired up about before or trying to make you think about something that you didn't think about. Yeah. Uh, that's Never a, yeah. did they and drop. That's a- and that's exactly yeah. what we were talking about when we were covering episodes one through three, because as I said earlier, I, I have not watched. Uh, seasons actually pre BB 15. I'm a relatively oh. newer Big Brother fan. It and me uh, every time which, she says that a dollar would sad. <laughs> because, and then everyone goes, Beth, that's so disappointing because you're hearing people who, and it's, it's, you can tell watching that these are not words that normally would come out of that person's mouth. Like they are being coached to say that in some capacity, or they're not, they're not the person who would normally play a game like this, but they're an interesting personality or they have an interesting look about them or they, I don't know, whatever the, the point is, there's some kind of vested interest that Big Brother CBS has in this person that they want to showcase. And what we really enjoyed about going back for, for Alex and Allison and Tyler, for them going back to BB10 and for me watching it for the first time is I'm watching genuine characters um, they might be like, to your point, being kind of coached to go maybe in one direction, but they're going in that direction through their own voice, if that makes sense. So you can tell that you can tell that there's a very, like Rennie's just very genuinely Rennie, you know, like there's, uh, you know, you, you were, you would come at it, um, in the diary room and we could tell like, Brian is talking out loud through his his thought process right now. This isn't something that he had to like sit down and have six different takes of him doing the same thing over and over. It was okay. Um, he's talking and thinking out loud, um, and you don't see that as much anymore. You actually, I you actually because you liked it, like oh fuck, I loved going in that room because it, it was just somebody else to talk to. Like those guys, <laughs> I like ten times better than I like talking to most of the people in the house. But it was you know they were. Yeah, they were. I mean, it, I, like I said, I don't know if if that's changed. You know, I, you gotta. It's gotta be tough, though, right? I mean, sure. Like I said, Robin's been casting Big Brother and Big Brother, you know, Canada and shit for God knows how many years. I mean, back when she cast Boogie, I think, and so, yeah. mm-hmm. so I got to imagine going through that for what twenty years. I mean, what what I'm number sure. are they on? Uh, this summer, yeah, if it happens, will be twenty two. Yeah. yeah. So, but that doesn't include the the celeb seasons, the candidate seasons true. that she's done, and those kind of things it's too. Just, and then you know, with pressure that probably comes from you know from the studio, and probably that comes from the money and and keeping people you know moving, yeah. it's got to be it's got to be tough. And when you start moving that direction, if it gets good results from a rating standpoint, it probably is hard to back that train up. But I mean, I I, I could see where. I could see where that they could move it that way, but I could see where it would be frustrating for people who loved that aspect of it because that's yeah, right. I mean, it was very much so. <laughs> look at our season; it was not a beauty competition, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, Listen, honey, there's no more Jerry's. 
Brian. There's no more 75 well, year old. Yeah. Jerry the, the, I th think the most interesting observation that I had was like on your season, I think like, who is this? Like Keisha might be the youngest female at like 27. And on Big Brother 20, the oldest female was 32. And they I were think, like, Jesus I think Anna. that's like a clear difference. You know what I mean? Like they're no. just the, oh, the cast now god. is like almost entirely in their twenties. Oh god! I would go oh, insane god. with a bunch of twenties, and not just their twenties, like, but like twenty to twenty-four, like early twenties. Yeah, I'll it's still it's, go insane. It's very much it's shifted from being. So it is a different. Yeah, yeah just different. You know, like, it's really shifted from what you know you had talked about earlier. How about this is a social psychological kind of experiment. It's shifted away from that aspect of the game to a certain extent to be like, what, what would it be like if we had a whole bunch of attractive people who fit kind of some archetypes here and like just did that instead. And um, I think that, you know, there were, some of us are involved in a, an online gaming community called Sequester. And what we really, really enjoy about that is that there's like, it's just about gameplay. It's just literally a good slice of America with very different types or even really the world. We've had a lot of people around the world, very right mental. Well. but it's very mental. And you can see like how people approach game from a variety of perspectives, which makes it even more impressive to watch versus like what big brother has become, which is really turned into like, okay, how do we get people who have a lot of likes on Instagram to, <laughs> to interact with each other in the house. Yeah. And, and like this person from Texas A&M, who's a, you know, like you're going to have that one person, whether they're a, a girl or a guy from Texas A&M every single year, you're going to have, that, not. you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, it's funny, but there were still people like that. I think when we were there, I mean, so in, in, in they, we didn't have the influencer aspect as far sure. as like what you're, I think what like, what you guys were talking about is people who are so focused on their brand, you're never going to yeah. find out who they are, right? That it's fun right, for yeah. them to stay. But, you know, Jesse was that 10 times 10. I mean, I, I don't Oof. think anybody ever really knew who that guy was. I mean, yeah. you, you knew who his brand was and who he wanted to project, but yeah. you, which worked by the, I mean, it worked. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he, and he's know, made a wrestling career. Right? And, you know, yeah. So there's, his he knew going into it where you could take i mean they did that there's people on the real world that started that i think that mm -hmm. that, that started that mm -hmm. uh, yeah but you know jesse went into it being like this is my character this is who i'm gonna play and you'll have those people but then you'll have people that can't fake it like rennie right. i mean like rennie <laughs> That is who that woman is. I mean, and God yeah. bless her for it. She she was yeah. one hundred percent as what you see is what you get. As, as you could get, and, yep. and the same thing. I mean, shit. Jerry yep. was too old to be anybody else, and so <laughs> you know, you had you had a lot of people who were who were themselves. I think yeah. you know what I mean. And yeah, and, and I think that that's that's a really good point. I think that, I think that what we really get bothered with is the, uh, there is a very clear, and I can't speak to what the feeds were like versus what was the edited version was on older seasons. Right. But more recent seasons, you're seeing a clear definitive difference between the personality you are seeing on the feeds versus what they are choosing to edit for the show between the diary rooms and like the moments that you have in the house. Um, and so there will be people who we are sitting back and being like, this person is a complete douchebag and they are, they've been horrible and they've really, and they, there's been seasons where really there has been like bullying happening in the house too, right? Where you're just sitting there and you're like, these people are just making this person's life like living hell. And then on the show, they're like, Wow, they're the golden boy of America. And we're like, are, are we watching the same we're person? The same the damn thing. Right so now. it's mm -hmm. it's one of those situations where I think that that for the people who are feedsters or really more involved with that, there's a big disconnect between like, you know, we are watching the feeds and we can we can see what they're like. I mean, it's, the pure, it's the purest versus the masses. I mean, you guys totally. are having the same argument that probably in a hundred different industries people are having arguments about. So Absolutely. you know, they, because that that the brand the people who are the the, the big person those are the people that that everybody loves right i mean totally. that's the mm -hmm. one that that gets the ratings i mean that's how we got a lot of the shows we have today is because people can't stop watching the train wrecks totally and so i think that you know and the it, it, it works i mean to a sense but again it's you're right purist versus <laughs> purist versus yeah. the masses 
But there's, I think that um, that's where you will have a disconnect between a show like Survivor, which there's no live feeds or anything like that. So people are generally going to have a similar experience watching it. And maybe they might have different views on particular people who are on the show. Um, but everyone on the same is going to be generally on the same page versus something like Big Brother, where you are going to have that contingency where there's like, that's not what's really happening. Yeah. We, we can't have, question we the have, edit <laughs> on the on the shows that don't have live feeds yeah. the way right. we can on Big Brother. It's crazy how they do. I mean, that, yeah. like I said, I mean, I tell people all the time, I'm like, it's like no show you've ever seen. I'm yeah. Like, People so can, immersive. What other show do you know that's on television, let alone primetime, as much as it is? It's on what is it? Right. What is that like three days, three times a week for an hour? Mm -hmm. Like, like for three insane. months, <laughs> yeah. and then takes over yes, an entire it premium service for X amount of hours every right. single night. Like, there's nothing else that exists like that. Like, it's Definitely crazy. Not. And then you get all the you know, and the, the fan base is so huge. We, I mean, living in L, like living in LA, and that business I was in, you guys would be, you guys might be blown the amount of like celebrities that would come up, and you would have, and they would be like, "By the way, I watched the show." Like you would get, <laughs> and really? they're obsessive, obsessive. Yes, yeah, because yeah. they, there are, I mean, so many, so many, so many Big Brother like like under like in the closet so yeah oh, undercover yeah. fans that, yeah that, sure. that are that are hardcore that yeah. like are as big a fans as some of the people that that you guys know of that it's sure. it's pretty funny i mean it's it's they're out there and that's that's why because of the access and and the real i think even at its most like i said this is i don't even watch the show even at its most fake it's still going to be more authentic than most of the other stuff that's out there. Oh, totally. Yeah. Oh, so. girl, listen, it's so funny that you brought up um, the real world because that was my first, what was it? 1992 when it very first aired, I was 15. Oh, so and yeah, and it, it was, it was in New York city. It was only six weeks long. It was 30 minute episodes and it was, brand new. And I was like, this is amazing. You know, and I can, and then they went to LA and then they went to San Francisco, you know, I could name it all. And I, and I Seattle. watched it. And Seattle was the, my favorite. Yeah. Seattle. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. The, the slap in the car and the, te oh, just I like the days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I watched that show evolve. I watched it until it ended. Yeah. And it really did lose. I think every reality show starts out authentic or it starts out one way. And I think they always evolve into something else. And you, mm -hmm. you're you either disappointed or you jump off before the ride's over. Right. And it's like the challenge on MTV. It hasn't always been the challenge. It was the real world versus road rules. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. It started out as that show and it evolved it into the, the challenge. Debate. What do you mean? That was the that's the first reality TV debate that's ever existed. Ro yeah. Real world versus road rules. I mean, that was it. I mean, that was that was the yeah. two the two sides. That was amazing. Every heated conversation revolved around would you rather be on real world or would you rather be on road yeah. rules? And the <laughs> obvious answer is of course road rules, but that that is <laughs> You know, depending on the camper, and I guess how early in the season you, you how early, how early that yeah. first season. I don't know if that was the right answer, but yeah, no, that was that's that's your first first big debate, in my opinion. Those are great shows, mm -hmm. though. And and it's like I said, you it does evolve, and you know, I've been watching Big Brother um, U.S. since it started, honey. I sent in. They don't know the struggle, girl, of making a VHS audition <laughs> tape and taking that shit to the post office. I mean, <laughs> and, and making sure you have enough cash because they don't take debit cards yet. I mean, <laughs> making sure you have all your ducks in a row. I made so many, and I didn't make copies of them. I never, I'll never see them again. I don't know if they ever made it where they needed to go. And how I got through my first round of auditions in 2008 was just going to an open audition in Memphis that they had at the Peabody Hotel. And that was it. I filled out an application about myself this thick. I called it the Bible. And they did have those questions like, if you, you know, your ex, who is, you know, somebody. I, I put down the one ex that I got along with really well and said that we hated the hell out of each other just <laughs> in case. Jesus, because I didn't want to deal with it. I'm but, not sure know. those ones worked, but I remember a big part of it was the... The person that you met right at that casting so mm -hmm. the producers 
it, like I said, this could be completely different now, but at the time would have to pitch their, their contestants or their picks to like the head casting, the casting producer mm -hmm. or whatever. So it's casting agencies. So basically they would select X amount of people and then they would bring them to the casting agency. Well, so did all the other little producing teams, right? So it's almost like it, sometimes it may not have anything to do with, with you and how your interview went. Sometimes it may have had to do with how good was your casting producer at pitching that you to the casting agency. And that a lot of the times I think probably had a lot to do with it as well. It's such a weird, yeah. a weird, like I watched it happen. I was there like, drunk, sure, but I was there <laughs> watching that. And it was very much a, a, you know, it was very much had a lot to do with so many other factors other than um, the last piece. And then the one I told you before was, is they hold on to people for the right fits. Sure. So they'll mm -hmm. hold on to cards, which Dan was supposed to be on the season before us. Um, they hold on to a few cards to wait to play them until they feel like they have the right the right cast as a whole as a unit and send them. It's such but, a weird like industry to get into because it's like what what ex requisite experience prepared, <laughs> like makes you qualified to put crazy people on reality television? You know what I mean? I mean like there's really I no either be really really crazy or don't give a fuck that would be yeah. the truth. <laughs> maybe i should try not giving say. a fuck <laughs> i mean because that was the the two things that i don't know i'm funny because i don't know memphis is the one i saw a question on there is who i'm still close to and it's definitely uh i still talk to angie a lot um from time to time i, I wish i still talked to, to steven i haven't heard from that guy in a minute but i know he's still out and about but uh memphis i talk to constantly um, him and I are still extremely close. We, um, but I don't know his story, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's something like that. Also his proximity to LA and, and all that stuff being with SBE, like you have a lot of, there's a lot of connection there. Um, it's, you know, cause it's part of that nightlife industry where Boogie is and all that stuff. So there's definitely probably a lot of it that has to do with that. Plus the casting agencies are in LA. I mean, there's, you're going to have a lot of that and you have no want or need to get into the movie business. So you're like, if you're in LA and willing to go on a show and you don't want to be in actual commercials, film or television, there's a pretty good chance you can get on a reality show. Like there's, it's, it's not, it's, there's definitely one of them are out there for you to get onto. So yeah. there's a lot of, I think that has to do with that. That's excellent. Yeah. Um, well, you mentioned Memphis and the last question that our, our co-host wanted to ask you was why did you view Memphis as such a huge threat that first week? Um, you could tell there weren't really, you know, uh, the reason I was talking to Dan about it is because I, Dan wasn't a threat. He was just, he, he, I was leaving. So mm -hmm. it was, there was, but I knew that that was the biggest threat to him. Cause if you really ran down the list, there's not anything else there. A threat of course, is people who could intellectually take it. Um, the rest of them, Ollie, I mean, Ollie was smart, but I, I don't think he wasn't as a formidable issue as, as Memphis would have been. So when I, when I, brought up to Memphis about him and I being one of the, I guess, 40 alliances I had that week. But <laughs> uh, when I yeah. talked to Memphis, Memphis shut it down like that. Not, mm -hmm. didn't say no, but just said he was not doing that at the time. Like he basically was like, I'm writing this out until the dust settles. Um, and then- Were you guys in the kitchen out. talking about that? Were you were you in the kitchen talking about that? Because I remember when I was doing my rewatch, you were trying to talk to him. He was just like, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, maybe I, I think it, by the time we eventually, we had a conversation a few times. Um, and that's basically what his, he was move was, is he was like, I'm not going to touch the game until the dust settles. Right. And so once I realized he had a plan, um, that's when I realized he was the one he had to watch out for because yeah. he's quiet. He's nice. Um, he's very intelligent to, I mean, he's a, he's very smart, but he was there to play. And that's when I knew that he would be the biggest issue because as much as people want to say they're there to play, you can kind of see if they're there to fuck or if they're there to get five minutes of fame or if they're there to, mm -hmm. 
because mm-hmm. there's really not a lot going on at the retirement home or if <laughs> something, you know what I mean? Like if they're bored or, you know, whatever. So like you can kind of feel out, you know, what, what is going on there or your modeling career kind of hit a sudden stop. Um, but that to me is, is the reason, I mean, there wasn't, there wasn't too much else there. I thought that he needed to be threatened by, like I said, anything can happen. So there's a million things that could have gone a different way. Um, but because of, if it was just based off of that, that's the only guy you got to worry about. Gotcha. One thing that I'd like really completely forgotten, um, you know, and like, obviously, you know, like we talked about, like Dan goes on to win the season and, you know, he plays like a really amazing game in 14 as well, coming in with a huge target on his back. So like, I mean, now he has this legendary reputation, but like, I had totally forgotten Jerry wants to put him up that first night and you kind of have to like be like no let's not do dan do you think that speaks to like did dan not do a good job making a first impression or is jerry just like did he kind of like sniff him out or was it just kind of random it was random i think um dan was very low i'd forgotten about that he was the first week very very low profile i mean like i said his association with me was his only the only target on his back and he was looked at like the innocent victim in that in that Mm. situation so um no i mean they wanted they definitely were looking at it as if he was some sort of probably a credible threat to he's nice he's the people he's likable i mean there's something there um but it, that was part of i mean he as much as i made a million of the the alliances i mean he was the one i would have yeah. would have 100% stepped in front of and so that's definitely kind of where i went that direction i mean i re- he really is just a, just a guy i haven't talked to the guy in years but i mean you know you can just when you meet somebody you can just tell they're very genuine nice like quality yeah. people uh, the dude is just he's one of the best his him his whole family they're some of the best people you'll ever meet in your life i mean they really are just yeah. it couldn't happen to better when you see people like that win shitty shit like you know, <laughs> you're like get it all to them like they you're like go ahead. absolutely <laughs> and he, he he you know he's smart he is able to to talk his way through stuff so yeah i mean the guys you know the guy is there so that definitely, you definitely could see that happening. Well, I, I just have to ask because this is just me, Jesse. I've never been a big Jesse fan. I have nothing against him or anything, but like when you were voted out, he didn't mm-hmm. say he he was. He really showed his age, like the, just the comments he made, and then he won HOH, and he's just you know doing his thing, just. What was your impression of him? Did you have any deep conversations with him? I mean, was there any like I wasn't, I wasn't exactly like friendly. I'm not like I don't. <laughs> I listen. It may have been a young. Disp- I'd have a really tough time, and this is just me like emotionally hiding it if I don't like somebody or I just. Mm-hmm. Oh, and girl, he was listen. very young, and I knew he was playing a character, and I just don't mm-hmm. like. That anytime I'm around that, it bothers me. Like, I just don't, yeah. I don't like it when my cousin pretends to be somebody else. He's when he pretends to be Harry Potter, it drives me nuts. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and that's his job. And he does it on Broadway. But I just, I know it's not my cousin. So, like, <laughs> they want to bring a little doing? bit more background for the audience. <laughs> yeah. My cousin, my cousin is, uh, is Harry Potter on Broadway. So, he, you know, he's we're six months apart and we grew up together. And but it's, it's still, not Daniel Radcliffe or anything. No, no, no. It's still, <laughs> when I see him play any role that he's been doing for years and years, like it's really hard for me to 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 do it. He's amazing at it, but I it's anytime I'm around that, it's something bot something gets to me. So immediately the the over the top, you know, it, it bothered me. So I probably, to be and to be fair to him, he was young, but I probably wasn't very friendly. Like I probably was very dismissive and snarky and I probably made a lot of comments. Mm-hmm. And cause like I said, you guys see a window, but we're in there a lot together and there's constant, yeah. but I do remember, I mean, I, I tried even after that, before we went into the next season, like I definitely had attempted to have some like, Hey, do you want to have a real conversation? And, 
you know, good for him. It's worked out. He, he, his character, he was building a brand. He was pushing himself. Somebody mentioned that on the, on the chat. They're, they're absolutely correct. And it worked and mm -hmm. got good on him. So hopefully he was able to kind of let that guard down and, and become that. But that's why, I mean, he celebrated because it wasn't, it wasn't a shock that him and I, you know, he would have celebrated when I was gone because 100% he would have been on my list right out the gate. So, and he knew it. So me being gone would have been a huge, I would have fucking cheered if I would have sent him home. So good for him. I'm, he should have celebrated. Um, but that's the game, right? I mean, right. and so that was, yeah, that was definitely. It's a good attitude. You see yeah. people, you see people get really salty about those kinds of things now. Like, about what? Getting kicked off a game show? About, no, about like <laughs> celebrating too hard or like, you know what I mean? Just like little things. People just like hold. <laughs> you don't, you don't hate, like these aren't your no. friends. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, like I said, I got lucky because we were in the same industry and we ended up developing like a bomb, but like building a good friendship. But like the chances of you staying on to have these lifelong friendships with these people is not a what the yeah. fuck? Three months in LA <laughs> in a shitty box. Like, yeah, you got something out that you didn't like. It's a fucking win. Like, you right. scream well, it to the rafters. Like, this person I hate and cannot stand is out of this house and has made me a little saner. And I, it's a great day. It's a, it's a victorious day. There should be confetti Absolutely. every time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That somebody gets voted out of the house. I'm going to mention that if I ever get interviewed again. I have a question, and the, the, I guess this is our wrap-up question. The million-dollar question, and I know you've never been asked this before. Okay. So put your thinking cap on. Would you play again? Oh, God. I mean, probably not. Um, <laughs> not, but I said that the first time, right? So, um, you know, you want to say yes. And you want to say uh, that you you would because you'd want another shot at it. But life obviously changes. And to be able, you know, I gave, um, oh, God, I forgot her name right now. Um, she had the kid uh, and then went on the show. And I. Libra? Libra. I was really hard on Libra for leaving, you know, to, to do this. Um, but I was young and, st and stupid. Like I didn't understand that what this could have meant to her or, or, you know, what you sacrifice as a parent. I have a son, um, now and it's, it's, it's different, right? It's, it's like, it's a different time in your life and to be able to make the time to do something like that, I think is a gift. I mean, Jesus, if you're able to do something like that and it's something that you've always wanted to do, then I think do it. Um, at, to be, and then, you know, the money isn't really, they might need to up it a little bit. I think, um, it was a lot more money when I was in my twenties and, yeah. and, um, it, it was, it would have done a lot more to say, Hey, I'm going to roll the dice for, um, you know, for, for 300 and change after taxes right. for three months of my life. Cause there's not a lot of jobs that are going to let you fuck off for three months and uh, try to go win a game show. You know what I mean? Yeah. And my job today isn't going to let me run around in a fucking Soviet Union shirt trying to, <laughs> you know, trying to, trying to win some money. So, you know, it, it's all situational. I would love to say that I would be, it's not that I wouldn't do it because I wouldn't love to try it, but um, it just doesn't probably wouldn't happen again. But if, if yeah. it did, I would have to look at it at the, you know, at the time I, I, I think anybody who has the opportunity and has and the, the things can line up and hasn't, I think, should do it. I would say 100% do it. Um, there's a lot more experience wise that could come, and in my case, after it rather than through it. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, you know, even being the first person off, it changed my life. So. So and that and I love that. I love yeah, that it changed awesome. your life for the good and you have a lifelong friend with Memphis and and that's great. And listen, I like I said I've been watching it for 20 years and I still have not given up auditioning and throwing my little two cents into it. Just you know, and at this point 
it's funny because uh, we had brought up sequester. I don't know if you're familiar with Audrey Middleton, who was on Big Brother. 17. Which one? 17. 17. I should yeah. know that. Um, she created this online um to say it's an online version of Big Brother is kind of an insult to sequester because it's its own thing. To be honest with you, it is a um, online game that it started as a you did played for five days, two hours a night, and you eliminated each other. And it was really a mind fuck because social media got involved and people were telling your moves and everything. And now she's cut it down to to minis and all this stuff. And it's kind of gotten all of us through the COVID-19, like she said, Big Brother versus Survivor, Survivor players playing against each other. I mean, it's been this whole thing. Uh, Beth and I have played and have both won our minis. And it's such an an emotional roller coaster just playing in these <laughs> minis. I, and, and playing the OG versions, I played twice. I can't imagine being locked in a Big Brother house and going through all that. It's like it's like I'm just begging to, yeah. if I were a guy, begging to be kicked in the balls over and over again. <laughs> but I want to do it. You know, I want to do it. I want to do, I want to play this mental game so bad. And I know whenever I've gone through the audition process, they always ask, well, what's your strategy? What would you do? And I, I say the same thing every time. I don't know what I'm going to do because I don't know who you're going to put me in there with. I may vibe with everybody. I'm a quiet person at first. I know that's horrible. Wait, but and I, you said that every time? Every time I've Maybe said that. Your and I, answer. I, I don't know how to change my answer though, Brian. I don't know how to not be myself. That's well, the okay. problem. So my answer would be, you've got a unique perspective doing what you do right now, right? So, mm -hmm. so ride that, I mean, the bottom line is, is you, your shtick, everybody's got a shtick, right? So your little shtick could be, you know, that you're going to go in as the expert, blah, 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 because this is, you know, you live, eat, sleep, you know, and, and drink Big Brother every day and talk about it, and strategize about it. And so what you're going to do is, I don't know, pick a plan that worked and say, and then drive it home that way. I mean, yeah. they want to know. I'm a really weird, weird version because it just was an accident and it kind of happened that way. But like from what I've seen, like they're looking for you to paint them a picture and they don't want you figuring out. And this isn't, I'm not saying that you are, but they don't want you figuring out. You don't know what the fuck to do and that you're boring. They want right. to know that you've got a plan so that they can d dismantle that plan and blow it up all the shit. That's the whole like, that's, that's, their, that's that a good sense. way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> so I would probably, and there's nothing like take what you think is the best strategy and drive it into them. Like, this is what I want to do. And this, you can't say that as much as you can say, you wouldn't really have a plan. I mean, even though you still, yeah, you want to assess the people that are in there. But my plan was either I'm, I'm Ricky Bobby in this bitch. Like I'm first or you're last. Like, <laughs> like you're, you're either in first and out or, but like that's, that was the plan. And so they probably knew he's going to go fucking, he's going to go all in and this could either really work out or this could crash and burn, both of which could probably make good television. So may, so I would think about that and maybe readjust yeah. the plan. See, great casting advice for anybody who's listening. Make Anybody's sure that you, listening. But you need to know who your character is and like in terms of the archetypes and such too. You have to have a lot of self-reflection to kind of know who you generally are. So that way you can have the, those kind of conversations with the producers, with the casting agents to be able to say, this is my plan. This is who I, what I will bring to this plan as a person. Um, yeah. So I think that that's a really great perspective to have, um, especially since you've had the experience of doing it. Figure out what your best is like when you everybody's a buyer seller, right? Anytime you've had to manipulate for um, or for a fucking cookie from your parents or yeah. for you know for sex from your girlfriend or boyfriend, like every time you've had to find a way that you had to get something that you wanted, figure out the best way you do it. And if you can yeah. figure that out, then that's what you explain to them. Like that's your best manipulation technique. And so find out what you feel. If you're a carrot or if you're a stick person or, you know, I guess that applies to sex too, but um, <laughs> <laughs> so you find out what that is and run with it because they want to know that that's probably what your plan was. 
So, anyways. Well, well yeah, I really appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> we really do. You know, it's funny. I know we need to wrap this up, but it, it, the, the funny thing to me is watching Big Brother Ten. I can I can relate a little bit to Rennie. I don't know why, just because I'm I'm southern, <laughs> I'm southern, but right. I don't know. That's what do you say? No, you can't. You can't. <laughs> you don't <laughs> they can relate to Rennie. No, than I that. just feel like because I'm southern and I can be sweet, loud and annoying. Sweet. She was a sweet woman, and she yeah. like like I said, she was authentic as as authentic can be. But she fucking <laughs> out there, like out there. no one can relate to Rennie because I who knows what was going on in that head. Like I to this day, she was still. I mean, she it was still thirty years earlier, and she was still at Mardi Gras. Like I don't. She oh, yeah. never <laughs> left. She never left Mardi Gras nineteen seventy four. That's a good point. A lot of people age out of that. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, there's not for any yeah no that there's no chance and that woman was she was one of a kind god bless her like that that was oh i have i have one last thing i definitely need to get your perspective on that i just thought about it. i'm glad i thought about it before we finish up um so dan like i you may know this dan does like a uh like a twitch stream and he's mm-hmm. like really successful on it like he does a lot of gaming and stuff like that like he's really made a career out of it Uh, well it's like so he's got like a really loyal audience that kind of like will jump on whenever he goes live and kind of like they're like people will subscribe to like go on with him while he plays like one player games and does different kinds of interviews and stuff it's a lot of yeah i mean it's he's really like he's he's made a career out of people will subscribe to play like watch him play games yeah right right it's a great racket twitch but um on one of his uh, things a couple months ago, he said that he's talked to Jerry not that long ago and that Jerry would love to play Big Brother again. Oh, God. Shut up. up. I would yeah. love it. Like 85 year old Jerry is like doing great yeah. and would play again. Oh, shit. And he's I'd love really? to get your, your thoughts on that. Wow. Yeah. I mean, what? Of course he would love to fucking play Big Brother. Because he was the he? oldest contestant ever, the history of reality TV in 2008. And- 87 now. Yeah, do it. I, I'm. I, there's something. <laughs> you live once, All right. man. This is just a joke. I, I, it's just a joke. I don't really. But yeah. I said, isn't he? I was thinking, isn't he already playing Big Brother in the home right now? But I. Uh, it, no. it, that's a bad joke. A bad joke. He, he was another one who was a really nice guy. I mean, yeah, I fucking a. If that guy could play, I mean, who knows? He's probably still crushing it. If he is, then yeah. yeah. Well, why wouldn't you? I mean, like I said, it's about time, right? And if you've got a shitload of time on your hands and you have another chance, fuck yeah, I'd like to play Big Brother again. What else am I going to do? You can only watch so much Jeopardy in Trebek. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, there's, there's it's, like I said, you, you, pro- you probably are in a routine at that point. And I mean, he probably was in the routine 10 years ago when he was at that point. <laughs> yeah. So might as well. I mean, yeah, I don't know how the fuck that would work. But, uh, <laughs> if I, I Jerry don't... came back to play Big Brother, would you watch that season? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, man. Come on, I Brad. I couldn't do it. I, I, there's so much that would be involved. Can you imagine the waivers that CBS would have? <laughs> Like just for competitions like, like he wouldn't be able to do the wall cop he'd fall right. down break a head i can't even imagine the, the, just the chance that he could die Serious liability on the actual like show <laughs> is like scary like not even yeah. from like a bad like he could just fall asleep and not wake up. That's, like, a that's, a that's a scary. It. One of the girls could have, you know, walk around in a touch too small of a bathing suit, and that could be it. Like, that's it. Jerry's gone. Like, I just, I, that would be, <laughs> there's so many things that could make that actually awesome, but also make that really scary. Really, really like scary. But, if he could do it and he goes on more, t- I wish I could do that. If I was 85 years old and I could go on a show, up, bring it on. I'm there. Put me on the, what was the one Flavor Flav went on? The Flavor of Love. Flavor bring of love, love. Put me on that at 85 and we're done. <laughs> I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Whatever I got. I'd do. watch it. I'd watch it. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a great question. Though. But good, good for him. I'm happy you thought about that, Alex. And fucking. <laughs> Good for Dan. I mean, Jesus. He is yeah. a jackpot. Only guy yeah. working during COVID is the dude who, yeah, who gets paid people watching to play video games. You're right. I, I mean, I'm also a Twitch streamer. It's pretty nice. There you <laughs> go. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice side, uh, uh, nice side gig. The Twitch? I'm not even that good at video games, but, you know. He's another one, though, that 
you know, he had a plan for, he had a plan for Big Brother as a whole. Like he mm -hmm. was not coming on the show just because he was bored and, and wanted to win the money. Mm -hmm. I mean, he definitely was like going to turn this into something else and use it as a springboard for whatever. So God, like I said, couldn't have happened to a better person on the planet. So everything he gets, he deserves. Perfect. Yeah. Well, it's Brian, we want to. Um, this has been great, you, man. It's been great. Thank you yeah. so much for coming on. Um, are, is there anything that you're working on that that you want to plug uh, while you're on the show to our audience or your social media accounts or where people can find you? Anything like no, that? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Leave them alone. You keep I'm a pretty like low profile. Trying to for yeah no there's there's zero I work like I said I work for Live Nation now and Perfect. we're just go out when and when you can go out to concerts go out and watch some shows which I'm sure everybody's okay. getting ready to do so no we uh Absolutely. other than that no although so, I should yeah. I feel like I'm fucking missing out everybody's got side hustles like, what, what? <laughs> I know right like Jesus, I can't maybe, even figure out I can plug and get paid for what is yeah. that? <laughs> I'm apparently need to get with reach out power. to Dave, man. He knows, he knows, the, he knows the path. If, if anyone knows the steps, that's the guy. <laughs> that's My son it. is a gamer and I'm pretty sure I, he could make some money off filming me trying to figure out how to work the remote or whatever the hell the controller oh. and everything else and getting frustrated. I mean, I watch, I catch my nieces like watching like kids play with toys on. I, and I'm like, yep. I don't, this doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I feel like I'm losing my <laughs> Like, I don't, why are you watching that little room? Why don't you just go, don't you have that toy? Isn't it like right there? <laughs> yeah, this is what you can do with it, Brian, oh, yeah. that you wouldn't I, know without the YouTubes. So we go to, show, like I said, I'm at shows all the time. And the one thing I'll never, that happens all the time is uh, you'll watch these kids. And when I say kids, you know, teenagers or tweens or whatever, like watching the concerts through their phones. And they'll watch not just, uh, it's not a 30 second clip. Like they're watching the concert. I've had friends send me entire concerts and I'm like, did you enjoy this experience? Or did you just like, the whole here thing you enjoy it. Like, I'm like, somebody Did you spend a hundred dollars so that you could stand, hold your phone I, and then like watch it later? Like, that's what I don't understand. I go to yeah. concerts. The resolution like, on the actual I'll concert take a picture. is amazing. <laughs> Yeah. If I know there's going to be a, an awesome moment or something like that, I might record that. But like, I the reason why I go to concerts or theater or anything like that is so that I can be within the space and experience the energy. And you can't experience the energy like this. And nobody wants to listen to the concert on your shitty recording device. Like, yeah, what do I want to it looks like sound? shit. It, it looks it sounds always, horrible. It like, sounds horrible. And you know. always look like you're 50,000 feet you farther away than you are. Yeah, you just want to tell yeah. them, like, just it's right there. Just enjoy it and have fun. And, no and kidding. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's my sister in law song, is, is it? Yeah, like. yeah, my sister in law is obsessed with Justin Timberlake, and she actually was 50,000 yards away. And she zoomed in on her phone, and like he pointed in her direction, and she was like, He was pointing at me. Yeah, I think he saw yeah, my phone. Yeah, definitely. No, yeah, yeah, you're the only one that yeah. the Justin Timberlake concert had a phone out for yeah. sure. No, no, honey. No, it's not oh, happening. God. Awesome. Right. Well, All this right. was fun. Yeah, I hope, thank uh, you so much, Brian, down. for coming on and of coming course. out of uh, coming out of retirement to, to come <laughs> chat with us, as we'll say. Um, Anytime. We really appreciate Anytime. It. Um, and, and yeah, thank you guys. Uh, we will be back Wednesday with epi uh, episodes four through six, the uh, second week, uh, to see all the fallout. Oh, brother, Brian. Brian gets eliminated. Yeah, and oh. they're still talking about Brian. It's so <laughs> funny. Since you just watched the evasion, funny anecdote. I was on a, um, because I work, part of what I do is in the, the booze part of the business, and Ryan Reynolds has a gin. Mm -hmm. And so we were talking about through email just randomly and somebody had mentioned Big Brother and he actually watches Big Brother and all that. And of course that threw me under the bus. So basically Ryan, I was like, so basically I was like, all right, fuck it. So I was like, you know, my, hey, yeah, hi, this is Brian Hart. You may know me from such episodes as Big Brother <laughs> season 10, episode one, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and, awesome. and I said, despite the, you know, despite the overwhelming success <laughs> um, I decided to move careers and go into something else and responded <laughs> with, it's okay, Brian, don't worry. I was never, there was never a Green Lantern too. 
And so that was, that was, <laughs> oh, that's that awesome. was his answer. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Awesome. He seems we'll, like a funny guy. We'll leave you with that. But yeah, that's uh, so enjoy. And uh, I hope uh, Big Brother, you guys keep watching it. You we better watch if one of us makes it on there. <laughs> Brian, I will. How about that? The first thing okay. I'll Yeah, if Jerry years, doesn't get on, I will, Allison does. Because you know. I won't fucking know. But somebody send me a message <laughs> and say, Allison's on Big Brother. I will make sure to watch it. Perfect. She's going by Little Memphis. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And if but you yeah. have trouble getting Memphis on your show, let me know. I'll give you his fucking cell phone and his house phone and everything. Oh, there you go. Oh, 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 good trouble. <laughs> we appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ryan. Um, And we'll be back Wednesday. Be sure to like and subscribe to My Weekly Meltdown. And you can follow us on social media. Our handles are here. Yep. And And remember to watch Big Brother 10 episodes four through six. So you can follow our meaningless banter tomorrow, uh, Wednesday night (laughs) from eight to eight, seven central for an hour only. Thank God. Okay. That's it. (laughs) And follow my cat on Instagram. Okay. Good night, everybody. (laughs) Good night.